ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد I welcome all of you and we will continue insha'Allah with ta'ala reading from the book Makarim al-Akhlaq, Upright Moral Character by our noble Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala and this is a part three. Uh, we, we're not going to be able, if I keep doing it the way I'm doing it, we may not be able to finish the book. And so therefore I'm, I'm going to skip reading the Arabic text and we're just going to read the English translation insha'Allah ta'ala. <coughs> so the last point we mentioned in part two is yesterday is that the Shaykh, he mentioned that a person should have good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As certain people may think that when good manners are mentioned, Certain people's minds may go only to be nice and kind to the people and to the creation. And that's where the kuffar, they would go wrong. You find them, they nice to dogs, cats, which is a good thing. You gotta be nice to the creation. And they said you gotta have some good manners with the creation. What about good manners with Allah, the Creator? And we mentioned that having good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consists of th- three things. Believing what Allah says when it reaches you. Number two, implementing and putting His rulings into practice. Number three, facing His decree with patience and acceptance. If a person does this, he has good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing what Allah says when it reaches you. Now the Shaykh is going to give details. Qala Shaykh, accepting Allah's reports and believing them means that one does not doubt them or waver in his affirmation of what Allah, the glorified and exalted, says. And this is because, this is because what Allah, the exalted, says only comes from knowledge. While he is the most truthful in speech. Allah is the most truthful in speech. That's why we should believe in it without doubt whatsoever. You may doubt somebody else, somebody telling you something, and you may doubt it, because he's a human, like you. But when things reach you from Allah, should be no room for doubts whatsoever. And this is a good manner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself in the Qur'an, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا And who is more truthful in speech than Allah? There's no one. No one is. That's why the Prophet used to say, and the most truthful of all speeches is the speech of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sermons. Shaykh Muhammad Uthameen rahmatullahi wa ta'ala continued by saying, to truly believe in, in what Allah says. Now if somebody truly believes in what Allah says, necessitates that one put his trust in his reports. He trusts what Allah says. Defend them, likewise. Because there are people who they talk, they're like, come on man, that makes no sense. You bring him an ayah, certain people, Ayah is brought to that person and Ayah is from Allah and he's going to tell you, come on man, we live in America, come on. So that's, that's, come on, Akhi. Just come on. And you tell him what Allah says. And he tell you it doesn't make sense. Because he doesn't make sense to his wicked understanding because that person doesn't have good manners with Allah. He doesn't even know what it is. Those who have good manners with Allah, they never reject 
nor doubt anything that Allah says. Why? Because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever Allah says comes from knowledge. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truthful in speech. So not only that you believe these reports, you defend them, trust them, defend them, and struggles by way of them. And a person does not allow the entrance of any doubt or confusion, or confusion over what Allah, the glorified and exalted, and His Messenger وسلم, have reported. That's a believer. Person who have good manners with Allah and His Messenger وسلم, he accepts their reports. That being truthful, no doubt whatsoever comes to him or to her as related to the reports of Allah. They defend them, they trust in them, they struggle, they apply them in their lives. When someone takes on this kind of character, it enables him or her to repel the doubts cast by those who speak with ulterior motives about the reports of Allah and His Messenger Whether they be, meaning those motives and those statements and those doubts, whether they be from the Muslims who have introduced new affairs into the religion, or from the non-Muslims who try to cast doubts into the hearts of the Muslims. If a person applied his good manner, which believing in, in truth what Allah says, then this person will stand firm against the wicked statements. They are Muslims. There are people who are Muslims, man. They say, La ilaha illallah. They pray, but then they bring some doubts to cast it in the minds of the Muslims. But somebody who knows this and applies these good manners, he says, Who says this? Allah. All right, that's it. It's happening. Doesn't matter, but wait a minute, yeah, it's an ayah, we're not talking about the ayah, but come on, that's, that's a long time ago, this is America now, come on, man. how are we going to apply this in, within here? A'udhu billah, because they use their intellect. But someone who has good manners, they, they, they don't get them, they have no impact on, on that person. The shaykh says, let's, let's give an example. So these are... An example that makes this clear. You find some Muslims who don't understand the religion and they cast doubts or non-Muslims themselves cast doubts in, in the Muslims' minds. The Shaykh said, let us look at an example. The hadith of the fly. The hadith of the fly. The fly, the baba. It is authentically re recorded in Sayyid al-Bukhari. This hadith in Sayyid al-Bukhari. Hadith number 3320. 3320. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, after the Hijrah, in seventh year, Abu Huraira at Dosi fought in the battle of Khaybar that year, and then stayed extremely close to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, going with him wherever he went, except in the house. That's why he didn't narrate a lot of things were happening in the bedroom and this and that and at night time. He couldn't go there. Anything else you find Abu Huraira narrating in for narrating Subhanallah. Because he went with the Prophet whenever he went, learning and memorizing from him. He memorized more narrations from the Messenger of Allah than any other companion, despite his short companionship with the Prophet of less than four years. Al Bukhari mentioned that more than 800 people narrated from Abu Huraira. So in this hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا وَقَعَ الدُّبَابُ فِي شَرَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلْيَغْمِسْهُ ثُمَّ لِيَنْزِعْهُ فَإِنَّ فِي إِحْدَى جَلَاحِيهِ دَاءً وَالْأَخْرَى شِفَاءً The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if a fly, if 
a fly, and we know flies. Flies get around us, they live around people. If a fly lands in your drink, now you're drinking some milk, for example, if a fly lands in your drink, what you should do now? What people usually do? Throw it out, right? They throw, they dump the milk. All right? Some people do that. Other people do what? Take the fly out and what? And drink the milk. Some they do that. Here's what the Prophet says. If a fly lands in your drink, submerge the fly. Drown it. Push it down into that drink. And then remove it. Remove what? The fly. The fly because one, on one wing is a disease and on the other is a cure. And then you say, Bismillah and drink. Alright? This is a report that has come from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he never spoke on his own behalf in affairs of the ghayb, the unseen. Prophet Sallallahu was not a doctor. You know? He never speaks. He don't know the affairs of the unseen. The disease on one wing, and the cure on the other. But he says what Allah tells him to say. What he reveals to him. He would only speak with what Allah, the exalted, revealed to him. Since he was a human being. And human beings do not know the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكُ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُحَا إِلَيْهِ Surah Al-An'am, verse number 50. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi I do not claim to possess the treasures of Allah, nor do I know the unseen, nor do I say to you, I am an angel. I only follow what has been revealed to me. I only follow what has been revealed to me. Shaykh Muhammad Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, this report is something that we must confront with good manners. This hadith. Some people, this hadith come to them and say, come on man, a fly, that dirty fly, and you still going to drink it? Ah, oh, man. See? Akhi, please, don't, don't hurt yourself. A hadith. Akhi, a hadith in the masjid. We're in a coffee, man. Some people, they think they can apply the hadith only in the masjid. No. Hadith is apply, applied whenever you're in a masjid, in your house, in a coffee shop, you know. So the shaykh says, this report is something that we must confront with good manners. Because good manners will help. Good character with, with regards to this report what is good character? Is to accept it. That's good manners with, with the hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. To accept it and believe in its meaning. And believe in its meaning. The Shaykh Rahmatullah says, We declare with certainty that whatever the Prophet ﷺ has said in this narration is the truth. No matter. Who has a problem with it? Allah Akbar. Some people, they may have a problem. They're like, wait a minute. That time, there's no microscopes. There's no labs. How did he, could he see the wing? Ah, oh, I would be like people using their intellect. Hey, now. Uh, there is one hadith that uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, Come to the with uh, Khalid and Walid was eating the meat of the bat. So he invites the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, I'm not eating this meat of the bat. So he had it eat the meat. And in this case, the food is halal. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't like it. But he didn't say nothing bad about it. He didn't say nothing bad about it. No. 
But now, when the flies comes to my drink, and I put it inside, and take it out and throw, but I'm not, I don't feel happy to, uh, to drink that mm. milk or anything that I drink. What, I, I believe that it has no ha- any harm. And the source of the mm. it has no, 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 I understand your question. No. How, if I don't want to drink that milk? If a person follow the narration, he should have no problem. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when you give that example of the meat, the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't eat it because he, he says the reason why he didn't eat it is that this is not the food of my people. He's not used to it. It's like you, it's like you bring somebody from, from Pakistan. You know, and in his entire life, he was eating only Pakistani food, like a real, no McDonald's, no nothing. So you're going to bring him some, some fried chicken or some burger and a grill. He's not going to eat it. He's going to say, what is this? He's going to say, what is this? Oh, this, no, I don't eat it because it's not the food of his, of his people. Now the hadith is different. Now this is the person, he likes milk. Right or wrong? That's why he has that milk, he want to drink it, then the fly comes in, now he changed his mind. Because of the fly. Not because he don't want the milk. That's two different things. So that person himself, if he thinks that, come on man, the fly comes in, I'm not going to drink it, that's the problem. But he should drink it. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, if, he, he, if that person wants to apply the hadith, he'll drink the milk. But now he don't want to drink it because the fly came in it. Now that person, he has to have a correct understanding of the hadith. It's different if somebody, they tell him, ah, he wants some milk? Oh no, I don't drink milk. That's, I don't drink milk, me personally. He give me some problems, I'm lactose free. But something I like, like for example, I like juice. And I said, yeah, yeah, give me a cup of juice. And I'm drinking, I drink half of it. And then a fly came in. And then I know the hadith. And I put it in and take it out. I'm like, oh, I don't want to drink it now. Now I have a problem. Okay, but we still, inshallah, are going to ask a question from the ulama, okay? I was just saying this so they can understand what, you, what you're trying to tell me, right? Yeah. So that's exactly. Yeah. We ask a question, inshallah. Here is, the, here is the question, me and you we agree on a question. Here is a person, alhamdulillah, he believes in the hadith. MashaAllah, he's not rejecting the hadith. Since this hadith is sahih, MashaAllah, he believes in the hadith. But however, this person, he did. MashaAllah, fly came in his milk, he put it down, take it out, but when he wants to drink, something in him told him, don't drink. Is that person now sinful or not, right? So that's a good question. And deserve a good answer. From a good person. <laughs> that's the all of that. Alhamdulillah. I'm going to try my best to get an answer, inshallah. Tayyib. The Shaykh Muhammad Rahmatullah says, We know with certainty. Now he said, We declare with certainty that whatever the Prophet ﷺ has said, in this narration is the truth. No matter who has a problem with it. We know with certainty that whatever opposes what has been authentically established from the Messenger of Allah is indeed falsehood. Because, because Allah says, And what is after the truth except misguidance? So how have you been turned away. So we go back to the question of our elder brother, Hafidullah. What the Shaykh Muhammad just said here, those who oppose it, those who say, come on man, are you telling me this? <laughs> who accept this? A fly, come in your milk, put it, and, ah, hey, come on. These are the people they, uh, they are opposing. But in our brother question, he's not saying that. Alhamdulillah, person affirmed this hadith, no problem. This hadith is the truth. The Prophet speaks the truth. Now, whatever the Prophet said in this hadith is true. 
However, the person, because we're human, we're human beings. Now that person, at that moment he feels some type of way, he don't want to drink the milk anymore. And keep in mind that sometimes a person asks a question so that other people can benefit. Okay? Not whenever somebody asks a person, we're going to look at him, why you ask this question? Well, people, they ask questions, and there is benefits, inshallah, ta'ala. Another example. Shaykh al he brings another example of this would be the reports about the Day of Judgment. Because the, what happened and what will happen in the Day of Judgment, this is from the unseen. Allah tells us about things that's going to happen, and the Prophet ﷺ tells us about things that's going to happen on Yom al Qiyam. None of us been there yet. So how certain people accept? Because some deviant groups, they even deny a lot of things. They deny things in the grave, they deny things on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Wal-Iyadu Billah. Another example here, the Prophet ﷺ has informed us in this narration, when he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ الشَّمْسَ تَدْنُوا مِنَ الْخَلَائِقِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِقَدْرِ مِينَ Verily the sun will come close to the people on the Day of Judgment within one mile. Within one meal. Okay, meal. Which is, in English, they pronounce that as a mile. But Shaykh Al-Ataymin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, and this hadith, by the way, is in Sayyid al-Bukhari, hadith number 1405, and in Sayyid Muslim, hadith number 62. Also is in Jamia at Tirmidhi and Muslim Imam Ahmed and others with light, slight difference in their wordings. Shaykh Rahimi he says whether this meal that the Prophet says is the length of a stick, a stick that is used for kuhl. You know kuhl, right? The kuhl is a powder from this specific rock. It's a black powder from this rock. In the Prophet's medicine book, they says that is 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 called antimony. Antimony, a n t i m o n y. Antimony, a rock that they grind to get kuhl powder. The kuhl powder is a, like this way. They call it mascara. A plier. You know the mascara that the ladies use mascara. for their mascara for their for their eyelashes. In 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 the the kuhl, which is tradition, that they have this powder and they put it in little bottle or jar, little one, usually made out of wood, and then they have this stick, like the Chinese they use to eat. It's like wooden, but it's like a f- very fine in the in the in the in the yin. So they stick it over there, and then they go like this, kuhl. All right, and it's good. The kuhl has a lot of good benefits, not just for beautification, but has good things. Even some men they do the kuhl for their eyes. Okay. So Shaykh al anyway, Shaykh al he says a meal, this meal, like which, they, this mile, like a mile, it could be, it could be that, the length, and it's only this, this, this big, could be maybe like eight inches, this is like eight inches in here? Hassan, less? Five, six inches? Yeah, like five, six inches. Just enough to get into that little jar, pick up some powder, the kuhl, you know the kuhl, right? Yeah. In English they call it what? Kuh. Kuh. But it's kuhl with the kaf, ha, and lam. You know the kuhl, Shaykh, right? Hey, no. Nah. Eh, in a lot of countries they have kuhl. Most Muslim countries have kuhl. They know it. And they use it as a cure, actually, as a medicine. As a medicine for the eye. But, but if you don't know how to do it, don't do it. Because that stick is very pointy, you know. Like, you make a bad move, you, you hurt yourself. That's why they have spe- 
people that have they know how to do it, they do it to others. Inshallah Ta'ala. He said that's what could be what could mean. Or an actual mile. The distance between the sun and the heads of the people will be very short. That's what he means. Saji. How far is the sun, they say? Allah knows best, but due to the to the science and the people and the technology, they say how far the sun is from the earth? Twenty or thirty thousand miles? <laughs> Man, we be burned. <laughs> right <or> wrong. <laughs> what is it they say? Two hundred million? Ninety-three million annual year. Ninety-three million lunar year. Lunar year. Yeah. What is that lunar year? Maybe a lot of years, huh? No, not like. No. It's a lot. It's a lot. The the sun is far, far, far away from us. But still, sometimes, man, you get ninety-three degrees and we run. Can be standing out there. Well, now in this narration that is in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, on Yom al-Qiyamah, the Prophet said, said that the sun will get closer one mile from the heads of the people. Even with this closeness, the people will not be burned up by its heat. In this life, the Sheikh Muhammad says, in this life of ours, if the sun were to come slightly closer to the earth, the earth will, will burn up. Slightly, not just one mile. If the sun will, will just move from its orbits a little bit closer to the earth, this earth will burn up. May Allah protect us. Amen. Then the Shaykh said, someone may ask, how could the sun come this close to the people on the day of judgment and they could continue existing? Even for one second, without being burned up. So the Sheikh says, remember, what does it mean to have good manners in how you deal with this hadith? That's all it comes to good manners with Allah and with His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Having good manners with what Allah says and what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that's what makes a difference, not the intellect and how smart you are. Where do you stand? What is your manners with Allah? And with what Allah says, and the manners having good manners with what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. Shaykh Rasameen Rahman says, having good character with regards to this authentic narration means that we accept it and believe in it. That's good manners. We don't reject it because of our intellect. No, we accept it and believe in it while having no problem whatsoever. While having no problem, distress, or wavering in our chests. It's not just accepting it, but then inside of one's chest is like, oh yeah, I don't know, man, that's, how could it be possible? Yeah, no. That a person should have no doubt whatsoever. That's good manners with the narrations of the Prophet. The Shaykh says, We know that every, everything the Prophet informed us about is the truth. Is the truth. No analogies can be drawn between the affairs of the hereafter. No analogy can be drawn between the affairs of the hereafter and the affairs of this life because of the huge difference between the two. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala went and gave another example. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala says, for example, we know that the people will be made to stand for 50,000 years on the Day of Judgment. If we apply this based on what we know about this worldly life, is it possible for someone to stand up for 50,000 years? 
If we want to, if somebody tell you, oh, I know certain people in here, in China, for example, or in Africa, they were standing for fifty thousand years. Would you believe that? <coughs> Why not? Because in human nature here, subhanAllah, they were standing, come on, they didn't go to sleep, they get tired. Somebody standing for 50,000 years, not getting tired, and they still standing. The, the sheikh, that's what the sheikh says. If we apply this based on what we know about this worldly life, is it possible for someone to stand up for 50,000 years? The answer, it is not possible, sheikh said. It is not possible. As the difference between the two is a huge one. So there is a difference between this life and the next one. They're not the same. They're not the same lives. The milk in this life is not like the milk of the Jannah. The wine in this life is not like the wine in the Jannah. It's, there is no comparison whatsoever. The believer must accept the likes of these reports and narrations with ease and a tranquil heart. The believer who have good manners with Allah and with his messenger وسلم, will accept any reports of Allah and any reports from the messenger of Allah وسلم, with ease. With ease and tranquility of the heart. Open his mind to understand them and allow his heart to accept what the text establishes. The people, they call themselves aqlaniyun. They use their intellect. And whatever their intellect agreed, if it makes sense to them, they say, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a hadith. If it doesn't make sense to them, they reject it. They reject it. They reject the hadith. The hadith is sahih. They reject it simply because it doesn't make sense to their weak intellect. And this because of them not having good manners with Allah. Having good manners with Allah and with the deen of Allah, with what Allah says and what His Messenger وسلم, said, is that if Allah said it, even if you have problem understanding it, you will never, ever, ever reject it. You will accept it, and you will know that Allah said it because Allah said the truth. It got to be the truth. No doubt whatsoever. Unfortunately, you find some people, they trust human beings. Who said that? So and so, somebody famous because he did a lot of researches, this and his name all over the internet. If he said it, yeah, that's good. But Allah said it, they have problems with it. A'udhu Billah. The Prophet ﷺ said hadith sahih, and they're like, uh, I don't think so, man. A'udhu Billah. Now, the second thing that they mentioned, having manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is implementing the implementation of the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having good manners with Allah is a person now believe what Allah said to be the truth and what His Messenger وسلم, said to be the truth and implements. Now we come to the implementation, applying it, for it to work, acting upon it. Shaykh Muhammad Rahimah wa ta'ala says, one must not reject any of Allah's rulings. As this is considered having bad manners in one's interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the case whether the ruling is rejected out, outright, the person refuses to implement it out of pride, or he or she fails to implement it out of laziness. All of this is something that goes against good character in one's interaction with Allah, the mighty and majestic. Shaykh give an example. Shaykh Muratimin always give examples because make it easy to understand. An example of this would be the difficult acts of righteousness we undertake in the month of Ramadan. The difficult acts of righteousness we undertake in the month of Ramadan Shaykh says, 
And by the way, Ramadan is coming closer. Alhamdulillah. Two months. Two months. That's what separates us. Because today is the 28th or 29th, Mustafa? 29th? 29th. No, no. Of the right month, not the wrong month. The right month. What is the right month, Abdullah? <laughs> the Arabic month, what is it? Zaid, you know? Ahmed? Muhammad? Jumad al Akhir. Sajid? What's after Jumad al Akhir? <laughs> Doing the math, huh? Right? So, count, okay, I wait for you. Ahsant, Rajab, Rajab, number seven, the eighth, the, the month number seven. And what come after Rajab? Sha'ban. And then Shawwal. And Ramadan, yeah. Ramadan. Ramadan. Then Shawwal. <laughs> so we have two months, Ikhwan. We have narrations that the, 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 the Salaf they used to prepare for Ramadan. How long? Six months. Six months before Ramadan. So f- for those who are not doing it, so we already missing any action, man, four months ago. <laughs> All right? <coughs> طيب. So the Shaykh Muhammad Rahmatullah says, fasting is something that is somewhat difficult upon people. Now, let me go back to making preparation for Ramadan. You got to prepare yourself for the month of Ramadan. And a part of that, especially the last 10 nights and 10 days, because we hear this question, some people, ah, subhanAllah, I want to make a tikaf, I want to stay here, but my job. They said, talk to your job. I did talk to the man, but they said, you should give us a notice at least a month. All right, you still have two months now. Go put it on. Tell them, listen, man, from here to here, I'm, I want to take my break. I want to take my, uh, what do you call it? Vacation. vacation. You have two weeks vacation, three weeks, take them in Ramadan. Take them in Ramadan. These days, this year, they said they project in Ramadan around like the 19th of July. 18, 19, 20, one of those days. Meaning that the, the Eid, will be around the 18th inshallah or the 19th of August which the last 10 nights start when? around the 9th maybe the 8th or the 9th of August so take a break take from the 1st or maybe from the 4th or the 3rd or the 5th of August until the 25th or the 26th you have 3 weeks take them all for the sake of Allah, it's only one Ramadan, one moment. So the Shaykh Muhammad he says, fasting is something that is somewhat difficult upon people. Since a person abandons what he or she is accustomed to, food, drink, and intercourse. And this is something hard for people. It's hard. Especially in, in the summer. People, subhanAllah, can't even drink water. But for the sake of Allah, they're not doing because they're protesting some law or something. People do that in jail. They protest and they don't eat for a month. For two weeks, not even one drop. But you're doing it for the sake of Allah only until sunset. <laughs> subhanAllah. So, however, the Shaykh says, the believer has good manners in his interaction with Allah, the mighty and majestic. And he accepts, again, what is this one? Do I need it? Oh, I heard you sleep. Ah, Jazakallah khair. Do I need this now? khair. Barakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah khair. Okay, use it. Jazakallah khair. Because you were here last night? Okay. Huh? 
ایزہ اللہ خیر طیب ویاؤں سی می سیف یو سی می سو فیل فری تو تو تیل می اینی تنگ رائٹ اٹس اوکی ود می انشاءاللہ تعالی ایم ای یومن So the Shaykh Havidah rahimahullah, he says, however, now, after he mentioned difficulties, when you fast, it's difficult. It's not easy for everybody. It's difficult. However, the believer has good manners in his interactions with Allah, the mighty and majestic. And he accepts this task. See, the believer, having good manners, he accepts it. He don't say, why, man, why we got to fast again? See, the believer that this doesn't even come to his mind, why are we going to fast? It's enough, we pray every day. So the believer, he accepted. And this could be rephrased. He accepts this honor, a bounty from Allah, the mighty and rizq in reality. Actually, this is an honor. The Muslim being honored to fast because the fast presents so much good. Many great things that happen to the one who fasts. So the believer receives this bounty with tranquility and his soul accepts it easily. That's why the believer is happy when Ramadan approaches. The one who doesn't have good manners with Allah, like, what? They tell him, oh, Ramadan coming next week. Don't remind me. You know? Don't remind me, man. They be eating three breakfasts, <laughs> six lunches, eating all day. But why? Akhi Ramadan is coming, man. I'm not going to be able to eat breakfast. I hope will laugh. No, it's not like that. But the believer who has good manners with Allah, he's like, Allah, Akbar, Ramadan is coming. Alhamdulillah. He's happy for Ramadan. So you find him fasting long days. In hot weather, look, subhanAllah, this is beautiful what Shaykh is mentioning. Someone who has good manners with Allah, you find him or her. We say him, but the sisters are included too. You find him fasting long days in hot weather while he is pleased. His chest full of tranquility. Not just in Ramadan. You find people fasting optionally. He doesn't have to fast Monday and Thursday. In the summer, 106 degrees, 115 degrees. Yes, people in Mecca, in Medina, in Riyadh, somewhere in Africa, Somalia, maybe UAE, where the temperatures, subhanAllah, get 115 degrees, 120 degrees, they fasting. Not Ramadan, Mondays and Thursdays. They don't have to fast. But they are happy. <laughs> if somebody tell them don't fast, they get mad. What? No fast? No fast Monday? Come on, man. It's strange if somebody tell them don't fast. SubhanAllah, if I read to you some of the narrations of the Salaf, and how they fast in hard days, long hours, 20 hours, 21 hours, and they fast. And they're happy. They're happier than those who are eating. They have more energy <laughs> than those who just ate a sandwich and finished a, a nice bottle, cold bottle of water and an ice cream, fresh watermelon. And, but they are more happier and, and have energy than the other ones. The Sheikh says this because he has good character in his interaction with his Lord. That's the key. Not because he ate a whole half lamb in a sahur. <laughs> then when somebody has some energy in Ramadan, they're like, what did he eat in sahur? And he had two lambs, huh? Some lamb, right? No, that man didn't eat anything. One date and some water. But what get him through this? What? The condition of the hearts. And the soul, he has in good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's doing it for Allah. Let me tell you one thing. I experienced this myself. The days when I eat in Suhoor some real food, I get hungry by Dhuhr. I don't know why. 
And some days, I drink little water and date or something, the day goes nice and beautiful. Yes, I experienced this, I don't know about you. At least one person here, agree with me? <laughs> Couple, alhamdulillah. No, you eat some nice, lot of big plates, meat, spaghetti, this, that, cake, give me that, coffee, juice, mix everything. By the third time, <laughs> you're thinking about food again. You want to eat, you're hungry. But subhanAllah, sometimes you even miss the suhoor. You wake up right after the adhan. And you think, your mind tell you, ah oh, man, you got to see it today. But that day is the best day actually. Look, but, but here the shaykh is saying, look at the good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is because that person has good manners or has good character in his interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the one with bad manners in his interaction with Allah faces this act of worship with discontent and contempt. If it was not for fear of negative consequences in this world, <coughs> he would not fast. These some people how they look at it, man. Some people, they just fast. It's heavy for them to fast. And has it not been for if they got caught and they get in trouble and people talk bad about them, you know, this bad person, he, he don't fast, they would not fast. Another example of this word be the prayer. Look, the Sheikh has given us examples. The prayer. Why certain people, prayer is like a mountain on their shoulders. They can wait until the Imam says, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. Some people, they, they're in the Salah. <sighs> they give it like signals to the Imam. <clears throat> like telling the Imam, come on man, we, you're... SubhanAllah. Right or wrong, Shaykh? Huh? <laughs> but some people, and you see them in a, you see them even standing like this. Man, they can wait until the Imam finish. <laughs> right there? Huh? If you call him again, <laughs> everywhere, sir, everywhere. <laughs> but some people, subhanAllah, they stand and they pray, they don't even want to leave the salat. They don't. They go and pray, subhanAllah, the sunnah, shh, here, half an hour, two rakats. Why, why? Because of the, the tranquility of the heart. Peace of mind. Something you love, you want to leave it early? Huh? Who can give me example? Something you love it and you want to spend a lot of time. You, even they put, they said, oh, we're, we're closing. And you say, like, come on, are you closing now? It's early, right? <coughs> give me an example. Huh? <laughs> what is it? Huh? <laughs> Give me another example. Kids in a candy store. Right or wrong? Huh? No. Sleep? <laughs> Sleep. Another example. Huh? Sport. Like playing sport, for example. Those people who like baseball, or American football, or the real football, soccer, they call it here soccer, but that's the football. All over the world it's called football, except in America. <laughs> they love to change everything. <laughs> they call it soccer. Football everywhere. Those who like that sport, 
They play for how long? Two, three, four hours. They tired. Do they feel they tired? No. If you go and see somebody, Akhi, I'm going to play in, in, in your place. Just take a minute. Why? you tired. I'm not tired. The man cannot even run. But why? What's keeping them running? The love of the game. They like it. They love it. Likewise, somebody who loves the deen, loves Quran, he can't. You can't take him away from the, the classes of Quran. Somebody who loves the masjid, it's difficult for him to leave the masjid. He don't come at, at the adhan. He come an hour, two hours, three hours before the adhan. He loves the masjid. That's why he's here. Even he be the first one here, the last one to leave the masjid. Some people, they even, after Isha, they come, uh, uh, sorry to bother you, we're going to close. Oh, you're going to close? Still early. Early? It's 11.30. <laughs> they give him an hour and a half just being nice, because they know this brother like the masjid. The brother is supposed to like the masjid. He went, get him a coffee, came back, and still finish everything, check the bathrooms, he didn't want to. He didn't want a vacuum, and but he said, "Since that brother loved the masjid, I'm going to give him some time in the house of Allah." And then when he came to him, I said, "Akhi, we are going to close." Akhi, it's early. Yeah. No, it's 11:30. Oh, mashallah. He don't even know the time. He so he loved it. Likewise, when somebody get into the salat, he loves the salat. He's in it. Not like someone who has plans. He make plans before the salat. Oh, after the salat, I'm going to call this brother. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to check this. Allah, Akbar. Allah. Hello, how are you doing, Akhi? Are you still there? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm going to pray. i quick. Allah, Akbar. This is salat now. Is this is salat. Somebody going to tell somebody. Hold on, don't hang up. No, I'm going to pray quick salat, okay? <laughs> if I'm on the other end, I want to hang up on him to teach him a lesson. And then when he gets he go and say, you hung up on me? He says, yes, I'm hung up on you. You got no manners with the salat, Akhi. How are you going to tell me hang up? I'm going to pray. Who does such thing? Allah. Now, by the way, some of us do stuff like this. Maybe not the phone, maybe I exaggerated a little bit. But some people may like, he just come in late to pray. Some people in the parking lot. And he's like, hey, where you going guys? Oh, we're going here, somewhere he likes. Can you take me? But yeah, did you pray? Come on man, you're not gonna get it. Come on, just give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute. Now also in his mind is to come here. Allah alaikum. Hey, I'm here. No man. But the salah is gonna benefit a person if he put his heart in it. You disconnect yourself from the worldly life. Once you finish the salat, mashallah, do you think? Go play that baseball game. As long as you play with good people that remind you of Allah. Go eat that food, no problem. No. That's a good question. And he needs a, <laughs> a good answer from a good brother. Inshallah. We have lectures, alhamdulillah, on, on that. We may, we may do something. But here is a preview here from the Shaykh al Uthaymeen. Shaykh al Uthaymeen, he says, prayer is certainly something very burdensome to some people. To some, he didn't say to everybody. To some people. It is heavy on the hypocrites. Allah Musta'an. Look, this is one of the signs. Salat is heavy on the hypocrites, just as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna athqal salat ala al-munafiqin, salat al-ishaa wa salat al-fajr." Verily, the most burdensome prayer to the hypocrites is the Isha prayer and the Fajr prayer. 
On the other hand, the prayer is not a burden at all on the believer. Allah Akbar. It's, it's, it's heavy on the hypocrite. It's like a mountain, like they're going to carry a mountain or something. Oh man, I gotta pray again. On the other hand, the prayer is not a burden at all on the believer. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And seek help in patience and in prayer. SubhanAllah, in prayer, performing the prayers. And verily, the prayer is, is hard, burdensome on all but the submissive ones. May Allah make us from the Mami. Those who believe that they will meet their Lord and that they will be returning to Him. It is not a big burden on such people. Rather, it is something light and easy for them. Easy and light. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ And the comfort of the eye has been made for me within the prayer. SubhanAllah. When the Prophet ﷺ, something bothers him, he go to pray. Some people, when something bothers him, they forsake the prayer. They don't even pray. <laughs> they do the opposite. He go to the park, go for, for a drive, away from the masjid. He get on 285 and spend gas and everything. Maybe get a flat. Maybe get in a car accident. I wouldn't do that. But you have problems, go pray. You have issues, go pray. You go through some difficulty, go make wudu and pray. Inshallah, and you see the good. So the Shaykh says, so good manners in one's interaction with Allah, the mighty and majestic, with regards to the prayer, include offering them while the heart is tranquil and relaxed, being content and pleased within the prayer. Here's your answer, Amen. Are we going to continue the answer after the Adhan, inshallah? Tafadda barakallahu the Shaykh Havidah Rahimahullah, Shaykh Ruhutimi, said, So good manners in one's interaction with Allah, the mighty and majestic, with regards to the prayer, includes offering them while the heart is tranquil and relaxed. And that's why you find, for example, some narrations. The Prophet Sallallahu says, if, if you're very hungry, go eat. Especially the food is prepared for you, you eat first, then pray. You know why? So that your mind is free for the salah. Somebody has to use the bathroom. He go use the bathroom and pray. Don't stand right there and eat like this. Huh? Yeah, he, he may not even make it through like he said. He's just standing right there. Because before he entered the salah, he's like, I can make it. <laughs> but now all he's doing is what? Thinking about whether he's going to make it or not. Man, wait, this is not a greyhound trip. Whether you're going to make it to Atlanta or not. But this is the salah. So if somebody is fighting urine or something, the Prophet said, that man, even the jama'ah, they praying, go use the bathroom, make wudu and come. So that we have... Likewise, if somebody is standing in the first row, but he's tight, and he's not focusing on the salat, now he's, he's so tight that he wants to keep his position, and he's fighting, oh, subhanAllah, this, this is the salat, go, go to the second rank. Naam. It's very important, because the khushu'ah is very important in the salat. So you have to have the tranquility and relaxation. Being content and pleased with the prayer. And eagerly awaiting the time of the next prayer. SubhanAllah. Meaning in another way, a person cannot wait until the next salat is in. That's all in his mind. Once you have prayed the fajr, Shaykh Rahat Amin, he gives example. Once you prayed fajr prayer, you look forward to dhuhr prayer. Not like those, he finished the game, 
He's looking forward to the next Sunday. A whole week. And he, that's all he talk about. He see them on Sunday night. That was a good game. You think we're going to play next Sunday? On Monday? Are we still on, right? Achi, huh? I make sure you come. Tuesday? I got my uh, new gear. Wednesday? Are you still on? He sent in text message. Ask, are we still playing Sunday? Then Thursday? Friday? Saturday is raining. I, it doesn't matter, Achi. Rain or shine. We're still playing <laughs> What is? Do we do the same thing with one another when we come to the salah? If we only do this, man, we're gonna be we're gonna see a lot of benefits. And instead of having three, four rows, we're gonna have people pray in the parking lot, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanallah, the kuffar on Sunday, the churches people may is packed, and we we we're on the haq. Why don't we have send this text message? Okay, I can't wait until I see you for Asr, huh? Inshallah. Okay, I shall love you for the sake of Allah. Okay, I'd like to see your pretty face, inshallah. That's all we need sometimes. Sometimes we want to pray, but Shaitan get us on another plan. That's okay. If you miss the Salat and Asr, what's going to happen? But then you receive a text message from this brother, second brother, ten brothers, fifteen, all of them. Okay, we'll see you for Asr, inshallah. Now you're gonna like be shy if you don't show up because all of them after Maghrib they're like, Where you been, Akhi? Now you don't want that, right? And we come. And then we do that with one another. We do it with a game. SubhanAllah. Let's do it for the deed, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so the Shaykh says, and also once you have prayed Dhuhr, you look forward to Asr prayer. When you have prayed Asr prayer, you look forward to Maghrib prayer. And once you have prayed Maghrib, you look forward for Isha prayer. And once you have prayed Isha prayer, you look forward to Fajr prayer. Some people, they finish, they didn't even finish lunch, they look forward to dinner. What are we going to have in dinner? Finish lunch first. Yes. What are you going to cook for us in, in, for, for dinner? Finish lunch. You know, you don't know if you're gonna make it for dinner, brother. Give the sister a break, man. But with this is the right attitude we should have. You finish the class of Tawheed, you can wait until the next one. Finish class of Usul, you can wait until the next one. So let your heart, the Shaykh says, become attached to these prayers. As this is certainly a way to have good manners in your interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third example. Sheikh, Sheikh give examples. A third example would be the prohibition of riba, usury, interests in business transactions. This also shows those who have good manners and those who don't have good manners with Allah when it comes to dealing with riba. Allah has prohibited us from usury with some very explicit words in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 275, And Allah has allowed business transactions and prohibited riba usury. In the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِدَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَى فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَادَ فَأُولَيْكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ So whoever has received admonishment from his Lord and ceases, stops riba. He hears the ayah, he is like, أعوذ بالله, أستغفر الله, وأتوب إليه. I said, no more, riba. That person is excused for what has passed. And his affair is for Allah to judge. And those who go back to usury and are the dwellers of the fire, abiding therein forever. The Shaykh says Allah has threatened them, who has threatened the one who returns to usury after the admonishment has reached him and he understood the ruling. He has been threatened with eternal punishment in the fire. And the refuge is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So people they live off usury, even they were making some good money and they think that was a good money. Is that a good money? That's not a good money, that's bad money. But once, if they have good manners with Allah, their aqidah is correct, they're like, astaghfirullah to believe. This money is not going to help me. This is a test. I'm going to die one day. No, no, no. I said, this is not good. It's not pleasing for, to Allah. Forget about it. I said, he's going to give you that gas station. Some people, subhanAllah, you talk to them about this, rebound stuff, and they're like, oh, how am I going to live? What do you mean how am I going to live? You don't believe that Allah is a raza? What do you mean you ask a question, how am I going to live after this? Meaning everybody do riba? Not all of them. What about they still alive? They still live in Alhamdulillah. And they happy, tranquil, because of their good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also being pleased with the qadr of Allah. And we finish with this the night class. Because this is having good manners with Allah. Once again, having good manners applies three matters. What's the first matter? Uh, Hassan, uh, Uthman. Believe in what Allah says when it reaches you. Ahsan, believing in, in what Allah says when it reaches you. And also what the Messenger says. Number two? Implementing. Applying. Implementing, applying the implementing and applying the rulings of Allah. What's the third one? Ahsan, being pleased with the qadr of Allah. And be patient. The Shaykh Muhammad Taymin rahmatullahi says, accepting what Allah the exalted has decreed, and being content and patient with it is the third way one can have good manners in his interaction with Allah. Then the Shaykh says, all of us know that the things that Allah, the mighty and majestic, has decreed to take place amongst his creation are not always things that the people favor and like. Is everything that Allah has decreed for us in line with what we want for ourselves? Shaykh says, no, not always. And he gives example, illnesses, for example. Illnesses. I'm not saying that people favor, as everyone wishes to be healthy, right or wrong. People, they don't wish to be sick. No. People wish and love to be healthy and stay healthy. Similarly, poverty. Shaykh Muratimi says, poverty to be poor is something that people do not favor, right or wrong. As everyone likes to have money. Alright? Ignorance. Another example. Jahl. Ignorance is also not favorable. Our people, as people like to be knowledgeable. Then the Shaykh says, what Allah has decreed varies for reasons known to Allah, the mighty and majestic. Some of the things he decrees are favorable to people, so they are comfortable with them and take to them naturally. Others are not like this. So how does one have good manners in his interaction with Allah as it relates to the things that Allah has decreed for that person? The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, Good manners in this regard is to be pleased with what Allah has decreed for you and to face it with tranquility, knowing that Allah the glorified and exalted has not decreed it except for a great reason and a favorable outcome that is worthy of praise and gratitude. Based on this, good character with Allah in this regard includes being pleased with what has been decreed and submitting to it with tranquility. Allah has praised the patient people, those who are patient in times of calamities. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَبَشِّرِ السَّابِعِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And convey glad tidings to the patient ones. Those who say, when faced with a calamity, verily we belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. Let's give an example. You park your car in front of your house, like you always do, and you get up for further, the car is there. 
for years. One day you wake up and a window is smashed and the radio is stolen. What is your reaction? And you wake up for further by the way to come to pray with the Jama'ah like you always do. What would be the reaction? Give me the real one. <laughs> and then let's see the application of this. Give me the real us. Now. See? See? Look at the consequences. Look when he ended up that night. <laughs> All right. Call the police. Call the police. Uh -huh. What else? Some people curse. Some people start cursing. Get mad. Yelling. Rare words. Yeah, I should have put it in the garage. If he put it in the garage, maybe they broke the garage. See how it is? Maybe if they were coming to get something from the car, maybe it would be better if he stays outside. Otherwise, now they're going to break the garage to get into the car. See? But what is the right way to deal with it? Hmm? No. Ahsan. Say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'a. With a smile on your face. Because now it could be worse or not? What could be worse than, than that? Broken the, the house. Broken the house. Yeah, broken the house and frightened you and your children. Should have been in the car. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yes. See? No, they just broke into your car that is next to your house. They didn't break into the house. And frighten everybody. That's a ni'mah from Allah or not? And only one window is broken and one thing stolen. It could be the whole car stolen. Right or wrong? And who knows, maybe they went and, 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 and do a lot of bad things with it and everything is on you. لا حول ولا قوة So you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you say Alhamdulillah could be worse but Alhamdulillah and even if somebody around you because it happened to me once my car, my van got stolen and Alhamdulillah I was happy I was okay I wasn't very happy but I was okay though. <laughs> and then when the police came <laughs> they didn't believe me <laughs> It was me and a brother from UAE, alhamdulillah, he's back, but he used to study here. And me and him, and he's like, oh, stolen. He said, alhamdulillah, what happened, man? MashaAllah, Allahu Akbar. Inna lillahi wa ilayhi rajiwa. Alhamdulillah. When the police came, they didn't believe me. They like they were talking to each other. Ah, you think he's saying the truth? I'm like, excuse me, man. I'm serious. You think I'm going to call you? And they're like, but you're not mad. I'm like, why should I be mad? He's going to bring the car. They're like, no, because we usually, whenever we come, somebody's car stolen, he's cursing, he wake up everybody that morning, the whole block is up, because he's yelling, all oh, this. He says, but you, you're not doing that. I said, why me? I'm not, I'm Muslim. We believe in the Qadr of Allah. They still didn't believe me. <laughs> they still, and they're like, all right, all right, see you later. I said, well, what are we going to do now? Come on to the precinct. We, they didn't believe me, man. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Guess what? That night, the same brother was with me. He called me and says, "We find your van." They were. He was driving with another brother. Right there, the van is parked somewhere. Allahu Akbar. He was messed up a little bit. So, Alhamdulillah. The ignition, you know, they they took the ignition and used the. You know what I'm talking about. Screwdriver. So Allah al Alhamdulillah. It could happen right now. We're talking right now. You go outside and you find a flat tire. What you do now? What are you going to say? Say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. And fix it. Because it's going to help you to fix your car. If you're mad and agitated, you don't know what to do. Now you break, you, you cut your finger. Now you're looking for a band-aid. Uh, no. When you're tranquil, alhamdulillah, you're doing it, and you're doing it, and you're easy, inshallah. May Allah grant us good manners, I mean, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as 
Tomorrow, inshallah, we will continue. We're going to read good manners in one's dealing with the people, inshallah ta'ala. And refraining from harming others, kind acts of generosity, inshallah, some good stuff. Not executing the people in some circumstances, not excusing them, actually, excusing the people and stuff. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu wa la ilaha 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 il